Hello subscribers, welcome new subscribers. Thank you for being here today. My name is Revan Penelope. You can follow Chemistry on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Thank you for being here with me today, beloveds. Thank you, I appreciate you. Namaste, I say loved ones. Uh, today, I wanted to come here and talk a little bit uh, I wrote some notes so I can stay on target. I want I don't want to just ramble on. But I do want to come here and share some experience with you. Some things I've learned. And maybe provide some tips or some experiences that may help you on your journey. Okay? Um, what I had to learn. So just make it easier for you connecting with the ancestors. We're going to talk about that, about the ancestors and hoodoo. And a little bit about my journey, how it all came together. Um, how it all came together for me step by step. And so you guys know uh, I've been working with my ancestors a lot. Uh, if you've been working with your ancestors and you think that there is a too much trauma going on or too much drama going on in your family to work with recent ancestors, the safest way is to go out and work with land ancestors. They're, you know, the ancestors that are connected to the land, uh, there were healers, there were shamans, uh, to go out there and start, especially near water. I go out to Toltec Mounds, that's where I had my experience at when I first came in contact with the land ancestors, I had a profound experience there. I shared a little bit about that, but you will, uh, you will get a sign that you have made contact uh, with land ancestors. Pay attention to the animals because they speak through uh, spirit animals. They speak a lot through the environment, through trees, things that. Uh, you wouldn't ordinarily run up on or a certain animals might catch your attention you know it seems like they're focused on you so I do recommend that and and finding a prayer and going out there and and connected with the ancestors it's really that simple uh, once you figured out that you want to do work with them closer and do more healing work because that's what i did and um wow the door it, it just opened up when i started connecting with land ancestors uh and 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 what confirmed what i was doing was the book ancestral medicine by daniel four that was a really good book his book is really good with guiding you safely how to connect with ancestors and of course I have some great meditations here on the channel for connected with ancestors as well providing you strength guidance wisdom and tap it into your own ancestral magic uh, so I wanted to come here and share that with you I'm going to be coming here sharing more about what I do to work with the ancestors I think I've shared maybe a ritual or two. I do many rituals on the water, but then I work on my altar as well. Doing the um, connecting with nature, especially around seasons, under the ancestors of the land, around each season, that's really good to do to stay connected with the cycles. Uh, that's a really big thing to do because ancestors are not just family ancestors are you know i'm gonna go deeper into this in a minute when i talk a, a little bit about hoodoo but ancestors are land there they is the land it's the plants it's the herbs it's the spices that help sustain human life on this planet they are the first ancestors here they are living uh, they are living organisms, so they're quite naturally they're our oldest ancestors. So connecting with the land uh, is essential, you know, because they are ancestors. So you really have to change your idea of how you 
think of ancestors, not just familiar, but on a wider uh, spectrum, especially when it comes to earth healers, earth warriors. Um, and you will learn that too in Daniel for a book because you have ancestors, it's ancestors. That's just people, uh, souls that's been here for a long time that is responsible for humans' evolution and raising, elevating the human consciousness on the planet, making it, uh, the planet a more safer place for other humans that's arriving here. So it, it's, it's ancestors' work is really bigger than what we think it is. It's, it's not just about uh, what we can gain from our ancestors. It's also providing a space of healing, a hope, and re uh, reformation, um, things that our ancestors uh, did here in their human form that wasn't so well. Racism is one of them, a big cause for uh, reformation. Every time we look at racism, we're reminded of our shadow, you know, and that's what's going on there. A lot of deep uh, healing that needs to go on that's not being addressed. Again, uh, change it, and I know you probably, this is not a popular thing, uh, a popular subject to talk on, but as you go into ancestral veneration, that's why I say when you go into ancestors and really understanding that energy, uh, there are some ancestors have have elevated them, their consciousness to godhood. You come in contact with some ancestors, they have elevated themselves that way. Especially when you look at uh, Aset or Asar or Isis uh, and Osiris, you see these individuals are were supposed to be real people, you know, uh, real individuals that lived here and had lives, but you, you see their lives play out in this myth. Um, in this this supernatural myth, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. But connecting with the land ancestors are, are going to be essential, uh, especially if you're doing healing work. I would recommend doing that first because you don't know what trauma in generate in in each generation happen. You know you don't know. So uh, and when you start working with the ancestors. Uh, the more you deepen your relationship, The Soul Path to Arisha is a, a great book for that. Uh, it may help me understand. It's just like picking a garden. Uh, you understand the responsibility that comes with that. Yes, there's a lot of benefits, a lot of gifts, a lot of things to unlock, but there's still also lots of elevation and work to do, especially when it comes to your healing like the Know Thyself course. I mean, and it all lined up, you know, it all lined up when I got the Know Thyself course because I needed to know myself. I needed to balance myself in order to get clear communication from the ancestors because we become a medium. We become the voice for the ancestors. And so in doing that, the best way uh, when you become a channel, it is imperative that you balance your life out emotionally, mentally, and physically. And so the ancestors really pushed me, uh, you know, it's a byproduct to balance myself and my relationship is deepening the more I learn about them. And a lot of what I, I have learned has been directly from the ancestors. And that, that is the amazing thing about my journey. Yes, I've read a lot of books, but most of the books I have read only confirms what I'm doing. You know, and that's so true. You, it's really has to be a lot of experience uh, that goes on when you're coming in contact with your ancestors, beloved. I wish more people, uh, spiritualists, was sharing about their experiences with their ancestors to give you a guideline of what that communication looks like. And it looks different for everybody. Uh, with me, it's with tarot cards. Um, oracle cards and now I channel uh, a clear audience uh, and clear sentiments. Sometimes I just know. I don't know how I know the information just pops in my mind. So 
and the more you work with your ancestors and um, you find a divination that, that clears up a lot of communication with you guys because they speak in symbols and we speak in words. And what the cards provide for me is words. And divination, divination uh, uh, provides words as well to put with the symbols. Uh, and me and the ancestors, we talked about that. They was like, you you be trying to use your symbolism, which don't make sense to us. You need to stick to words and let us stick to symbols. That's how we talk to you. You need to open up your mouth and ask for what you want. We hear you, but we need you to speak that and stop trying to use symbolism. If you're going to use a symbolism, you need to speak while you're putting it there. And we'll understand because we understand symbolism. So uh, understanding, too, that spirit speaks in a different language. It, it speaks in symbols and signs, and it speaks through our environment as well, through music. Um, I'll play music sometimes, and I know the ancestors sent that song to me. I even have a playlist of some of the songs um, that have been confirmational to me, the ancestors have sent to me. So... Paying attention to those things, too, are very, very important. Uh, I wanted to move on to, uh, yes, I wanted to talk about my experience the other night, uh, which I, this is my ancestors' day. This is the day I spend with my ancestors. And it's always fabulous because the communication is always so clear. Uh, and it may not make sense. Like, I had a um, thing going on at home and with a breakdown in communication. And they had told me what I needed to do. Like, they had told me what I needed to do before I knew what I needed to do. But it didn't make sense then when I read it. I was like, I need to do what? I'm like, what does this mean? And it's not until I went back this week and saw the card that I pulled and said, oh, my God, now this makes sense because everything this card, <laughs> card said actually happened, you know. And so sometimes they bring, you know, they'll bring forth knowledge that you may not understand that you're going to be, you know, going through and you're not even aware of it. So they see things that we can't see in ourselves sometimes. So that was a beautiful experience. And I had another experience where, you know, I have never, usually when I do my, go to my ancestor altar, I'm usually just using my, uh, the cards that's on my altar, which is my uh, ancestor tarot card, messages from postcard from spirit. I love that. They are always on talking for our ancestors, messages from ancestors, and the earth warrior cards. Uh, really good cards. I love those cards. I love the imagery on them, and uh, the messages come through clear for me. So, this uh, last week, the ancestors were like, you need to get your ISIS cards out, you know. And I was like, okay. And so I got my ISIS cards out. And oh my gosh. And I did a reading on myself. And that the message was just so clear. And I can hear the ancestral mothers, the ancient ancestral mothers, uh, feeling their presence during that reading. And I asked during the reading, I was like, where does hoodoo come from? You know, where does hoodoo come from? And for me, I might get an answer right then and there. Or I may not get an answer right then and there uh, intuitively. It might come later, but I've asked the question. But as I asked the question and I had left my altar and began to uh, settle in for the evening and how spirit speaks to me sometimes, imageries will pop in my mind. I would just see images. It may be something that I've done uh a memory that I do have where they're trying to relate a message through me through my own consciousness, through my own memories, if that makes sense to you. And I'd be like, oh, yeah, I remember that time. And it was like, we're, this is what we're trying to tell you. You know, this time here, this is what, what happened during this time, and this is the message that we're trying to relate to you. So pay, pay attention when memories and stuff like that pop up out of nowhere. It could be uh, a message from the ancestors because that's how they speak with me. And so, uh, the message that they came in, I mean, the ancestral mothers came in so powerful. As you know, I, I work closely with those uh, ancient, um, those 
older ancestors because that's where the, all the healing is. So uh, when I was when I was asking about this. I'm sorry, I thought somebody was pulling up. I'm sorry, you guys. When I was asking about this, uh, the instant, uh, uh, Isis came through, and she said, uh, <laughs> she said, hello, beloved. Um, you asked the question. Kudu is so old, it, it, you can see it in command. We practice it to command us mothers. It was our folk medicine. It was the relationship we had with the plants, the soil, the trees, the seeds, the sky, even the seasons. We learn how to work with these and, and develop relationship with these energies. And we knew how to use them with different prayers and knew how to watch the stars uh, to do different healing work. So, I mean, she just came through real strong. She said, so when you're looking at this, you're looking at hoodoo. She said, now go to your Bible, <laughs> which is from Kemet. We, we wrote this Bible. These, this is our knowledge. If you've never watched my video on Matriarch the Patriarch, go watch that video. The, again, this is ancestral knowledge that was shared that directly with me from these older mothers. I don't, you know, maybe they're coming to me because of my mother wound that I need to be healed. And so I get a lot of support from those ancient ancestral mothers uh, that come through. So maybe that's why they're coming through uh, to fill that gap. Uh, and offer me the healing that I really need. And so she says, remember the story when Osiris' body got torn apart and I was able to uh, heal him? You know, I was able to bring, create with that and use my magic in that? That's hoodoo. That's hoodoo. Uh, then she went on to talk about um, the Bible, and she said, remember the story of Tobit. Go read the story of Tobit where the angel Raphael tells Tobit to go get this fish and use different parts out of the fish to heal these, uh, this woman who her husbands kept on dying. She had seven husbands because this demon kept killing her husbands. So he used it on her, and he used it on another guy. Again, this is hoodoo. Uh, when you look at all the herbs, the spices uh, that's in the Bible, and it's being repeated in reference. It's an indication right there, and we pay no attention to it. We really don't pay attention to it. Hoodoo is all through there. Folk magic is all through there. It's all through there when you're looking at the herbs and, and spices and all of that stuff. It's all through there. And it's an indication they already knew the medicinal magical properties of the herbs and spices that's, that's in the Bible. Hyssop, root, those things there, they're mentioned in the Bible. Even uh, some crystals and stones, when they were supposed to wear this plate with stones in it, some of the priests that and Aaron, <clears throat> excuse me, they were supposed to wear these stones. And so you see magic. Religion, magic, uh, I would call it, uh, what they call it, magical, religious, uh, spiritual practices in the Bible. You're seeing magic in the Bible. You know, I don't know how Christians want to explain that away, but when I was seeing it everywhere, I was like, oh my gosh, we missed this whole thing, this relationship with nature, this working with nature to bring, uh, think, manifest things and to change, uh, shift changes in our environment we've been doing this from the beginning of time and so it is our oldest ancestral magic and that's really what it is and developing your own system and that's why it looks so different too uh when i came in contact with it it looked different in different places it looked different in different places so again it it depends on on your family i keep up on this table i'm sorry you guys 
uh, it depends on your your location where you're at, you know, your geographical location, uh, the plants that's available that the ancestors, your ancestors used that was uh, connected to that land. It may look different. It may look different uh, based on the religious practice because you can look at each practice and I like to call it folk magic or even further ancestral magic because it's usually passed on by someone in the family. If not, then you, you'll be being called to go in that area. And that certainly is my disposition the more I travel down this road and learn. I mean, they have taught me how to uh, work with different dirts, different dirts and, and spell work, candle work. You know, it's got different energies in it. Uh, taking a uh, hoodoo bath, you can't just take a spiritual bath. It's a way you got to wash when you get in there. It's a way you have to dry off when you get in uh, taking a, a, a bath. Uh, when you're doing spell work, uh, what they're teaching me is it's not it's easy as lighting a candle and burning a candle for somebody. Again, this is a way of life. It's a way of thinking as well. You know, it's, it's really has made me more mindful of the way I do my work. Even doing a petition. Uh, if I want something coming towards me, then I'm going to fold a petition towards me. If I wanted something going away from me, I'm going to fold that petition away from me. Um, if I want to lock something down, you know, I might drive my petition in a circle. Again, these are the things that they are really uh, teaching me. And to use a spell uh, intertwined in a Bible verse, or just showing me where a Bible, uh, where you know, there a Bible verse is clearly a spell, and using that. Now, I was not one to use that, but again, this is ancestral. This is their traditional ancestral magic. Okay. This is the path that they wanted me to go down. Uh, on it's the because me, I didn't want to be tied to any religious uh, system, you know. And especially when it came to Christianity, I did not want to use the Bible. I did. I'm just like, uh, they, and then I had to go back uh, because you know, you guys, I went to metaphysical school, I have a bachelor's in metaphysics, and understand the Bible from a metaphysical perspective but i still didn't want to use it because of the trauma it caused but those ancestors that are tied to the land that knew how to use these energies uh these spirits and plants uh soil and other things was like no we're gonna change the way you look at this you know you don't have to be a christian to do this the Bible, the, the, the stuff that you're seeing in the Bible is older than what you think it is. It just didn't start with the Bible. You know, this before, you know, this was passed down. A lot of this stuff was passed down through oral tradition. You know, so uh, they have made me aware of that too. So a lot of what, especially when you go look at the, um, go look at my book group review, The Sibyls about these women who wrote a lot of things in the Bible. Uh, if you look at the Hebrews, um, I did a book review on that. They broke away. Hebrew means to break away. They broke away from their, uh, from who? You know, I, got, I did a book review on that. So you have these patriarchs that have this uh, matriarch religion and now they're dominating the planet. And now they're shifting the way they use the system, the spiritual system. You know, when this system originally belonged to women who had this close relationship with the land. Remember, there were gatherers. There were hunter-gatherers. Okay? And so, and that's when, too, uh, agriculture was based on the moon. When you look at the almanac, it's based on the moon. Okay? And they... And, and they plant seed according to the moon. So, of course, they had this, this close relationship with plants. I even look at my grandmother. She still kept a lot of those ancestral rays. She kept the almanac. 
She cut her hair according to the almanac. She started her garden and she she loved plants. I still have a plant that was in her room when she passed away. Uh, she had plants galore. She always had a garden, you know. Uh, she still, even though my family was dysfunctional, I could still still see some of the um, some of the ancestral traditions that they caught they uh, they kept, but I was very unaware of. And now that I'm reaching back. Like my ancestral mother said, nothing is lost here that can't be found. And they are teaching me that too. Like, it, I, I am really, oh my gosh, I can't wait to start introducing my uh, my botanical candles that they, uh, fixed candles that they have taught me to fix and help others uh, in their, you know, condition work. And my uh, herbal oils, you know, they are really teaching me some things on how to uh, purify, how to cleanse, and how to charge uh, different spiritual items for use. Uh, and I and they're teaching me about mojo bags too. Like I'm really into mojo bags, and I noticed that too. Reading, uh, reading in the hoodoo, they wasn't too much into crystals. They use, they would take, they would use mojo bags, and and crystals and stones really to focus their energy. That's really what they use crystals uh, for. To, uh, to concentrate and make these little containers of mojo bags and things like that. So I'm really, uh, I'm really learning a lot of things. I really wanted to come here and share this with you, this experience that I had with Isis, uh, you know, and the experience I had with those ancestral mothers connecting with them. It was just an awesome feeling. I can feel them during the reading present there, being in that power and that love. Uh, and, and there was a matter of fact, like, this is us. So I want to come here and share that experience with you and, you know, give you encouragement and empowerment on your journey uh, with your ancestors. You know, with me, I had, I, when I created the Know Thyself course, it really took off, my healing took off, my communication with the ancestors became more clear. Uh, and little, uh, you know, and that's a part of Mayat. Again, we're going back to Kimmy. You know, again, they were taking me where they wanted me to be. They were taking, they take you where they want you to be, beloved. Uh, you just follow the path and stay dedicated to your altar work and dedicated to going there to that altar, uh, providing, being open, being honest, whatever is going on with you. And listening being willing to listen to what they have going on and finding you a medium to communicate whether that be tarot cards uh which i'm gonna i'm gonna be doing a a workshop a tarot card workshop here soon uh probably somewhere in march or april and it's just gonna be a beginner's course really simple uh for you guys just uh just starting out and then later i do a more advanced uh, so you will learn how to really tap into your intuition when you're using the cards. And the more you use the tarot cards, for me, the more clear my communication with spirit became. It's just a byproduct of it. My intuition heightened. And that that and if you're working with your ancestors, that would definitely help with clearing us of things, uh, especially doing the shadow work you guys doing I, I have the know thyself course i can't recommend i mean I, I i you know i can't emphasize how important it, it is to have balance and being a a good channel for spiritual communication again this is about self-mastery too about tapping into that ancestral magic and a lot of them use this this magic for healing and for balance and that's what this is for like i told you when i first got in hoodoo i did a i did a whole um bunch of, and i still do i do a whole bunch of healing work on myself because i need to stay balanced i need to stay balanced so when i do get ready to do whatever i'm gonna do i focused enough on my behaviors and thinking and speaking or whatever it may be that i know my work is going to be effective because I've been focusing on maintaining my inner peace and balance. And if that looks like, um, that may look like 
doing a spiritual bath. They may look like doing an egg cleansing, whatever they lead me to do to keep myself spiritually uh, clear and mentally clear. That's what I do. Uh, exercise, that's what I do. Eat more vegetables, that's what I do to maintain a clear channel uh, for my ancestors. And so I hope this provided you some, some insight. Uh, my experience has provided you some insight about your journey maybe it 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 tells you where you might be on your journey you know i wish more spiritualists were coming forth talking about their experience uh when it comes to doing ancestral veneration because it looks different for everyone but one thing uh remains the same is that they are there and they are listening and the more that we're open to it the better the communication. Okay? Thank you for being here with me today, beloveds. Light, love, namaste, I say love one.